land of uh, parts of the Aboriginal mythology and, and legend and lore, and I loved a lot of that, so it's represented in that ship. Here we have the Appalachia. This one was constructed actually for the 20th anniversary of the Erie Canal Fest and was on display there for a while, and it built it out on the site, and it was christened there too. It was built for what was called, what was called Alcoa, now it's called Iroquois uh, tankers. Each of these ships are either named for one of the nations of the six nations, Iroquois or Haudenosaunee. Uh, but this one is called the Appalachia, and it's a little different, and it's an oil tanker, basically. That's what it's doing. So that was, th this one had been upstairs for the longest time. I totally forgot about it after a while, and then I brought it. I found it, and I said, I need some color and different variations, so I brought, brought it here. Here is the Scorpio Star II. It was originally the Andes of the Royal Mail Line, if you will. My interpretation of the same of, an, of a real ship, actually, that name and reputation. And it's it's gone through some trials and tribulations. You can see some some mushiness right there in the front there. Uh, so it could have been scrapped a long time ago, but I did keep it around because it had a really unique um, design and interior decor in there. Uh, that's all original on the inside there, although the back end has been redone. And uh, there used to be a spa back there and a staircase down to it and all that. So it's been changed around a little bit. Um, so it, it is, as you see it today, still operating there. We have then uh, the last two that I'll show you here. This is the Batavian. The, uh, this is the Batavian of the Ward Line. Sister ship was the uh, Bohemian. Uh, or should I say, I'm sorry, the Bostonian. I'm sorry, her sister ship is the Bostonian. Another ship in the line. It's at home right now, though. Uh, but the first ship here... It's got two stacks on it. There's actually Pringles cans on the insides of the funnels right here. Um, used to use those a lot. And this is a museum ship. But it's a museum ship in such a way that it actually showcases the history of the collection up to about this point, especially those very early ships and those ships that have long since disappeared or have been scrapped in the collection. So all the way around. And this was displayed over there, so you can see all the way around it. Uh, but then we moved it up here uh, after a while to make way for the Oxfordshire 4 and the event for that. Um, there are different details in here. One thing I'll show you of this is the little crown figure right in there that actually was a sort of figurehead and it was on the front of this ship that's right next to it there, the Aquitania 1. And it, and it carried a little tinfoil crown on the front of it uh, for many years and then it was placed on the newer Aquitania but then it was pulled off of that, and now it's on display in this little museum, if you will, in there. And so that's what it does. Finally, we have the Caledonia II. And the Caledonia II is a little lot of fun to make right here. Very asymmetrical ship compared to some of the other ones from before, but also one of the most fun to look at, I suppose. Um, and it has not only a forward dining saloon with a, with a linoleum tile on the front there, but it also has a sauna in there. The only problem with this, though, is that, well, it, not, not, most of these ships don't necessarily have a set logic to them, as you could probably tell. In this case, there is only a stained glass uh, wall or, or scene between where people are coming up the stairway and the sauna. So as you're coming up, you can kind of see into the sauna <laughs> if you were one of them. So the people never go, hi there, you don't have naked people. Hi there, how are you? You know, it's just weird. But hey, hopefully there's enough steam to kind of... <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was a fun thing, a contradiction there. And here we have the pool in the back of it. These ships, or at least some of them, have pools in the back where you have these big uh, blue plastic uh, covers and they actually used to be covers off of real world pool models and they were models that were made for a pool uh, building company. Uh, they used to take these models in suitcases and bring them to prospective customers. They would lay them out and plug them in in some cases and show them what they could uh, enjoy. Well, um, uh, we ended up having several of these cases brought to our place. They sort of fell apart, though. But I salvaged those unique plastic pieces and then reinstalled the same pools in these ships. And so the pools came back to life as pools for these ships. And a lot of people have, you know, they feel like they want to touch them, especially when they're lit up from the inside because they look so realistic uh, within them and just brought a whole other different dimension within the pool rooms rather than just put blue paint down. You, there's a whole, you know, depth to it now. So that was a whole great experience. Um, and so that is the uh, whole tour.
And so thank you very much for coming, everybody. And thank you all for, for watching at home. Um, there will be other different times where, where the ships may appear in the future, so just stay tuned. And also, um, if you ever have uh, ideas of your own that you want to put into something like that, regardless of what it is, the imagination, it really is boundless. And if you think, if think about it enough, you can make your own fleet of whatever it is. Thank you, Ian.